Hello folks. So I thought I'd give you a different view today. I'm upstairs instead of in the basement and I wanted you to see my, or at least where some of my metal prints are hanging. Um, but I'm making this video because about a week ago I posted the question on YouTube as to whether I should buy a Celestron Rasa and I got so many good informative comments on that video that I wanted to tell you what I decided on. And um, I'll tell you right up front, my decision is no. I'm not gonna buy a Celestron Rasa as much as I wanted to. And this has nothing to do with the quality of the Celestron Rasa or, or, or what it can do because, you know, I've never owned one. That wouldn't be fair for me to judge it. And the people I've seen that do use them, um, they love them. So I just wanna make sure I got that out of the way. My, my reasons, um, are different, but many. And if you stick around, uh, I'm going to tell you how I made my decision and what I decided to do instead. Okay, so this whole idea of getting a, a fast scope started when I I have this QHY10 OSC camera, it's a CCD. Um, it's just sitting around collecting dust, and I wanted to get some use out of it. And um, because it's a one-shot color CCD, it's definitely not as sensitive as my um, mono CMOS camera. So I thought, wouldn't it be nice to get a fast scope with it? So that, that got me thinking about a Rasa 8-inch to pair it with uh, that QHY10. When I posted the question about buying a Rasa about a week ago, a lot of people said, you know, that, that scope and that camera um, uh, may be undersampled. And when I did some research on it, I actually, I, I didn't know what that meant at first. And so I did some research on it and I created a video on how to check if you're oversampled and undersampled. And I'll post the link for it up here. And uh, by the way, don't let that video scare you. A lot of people, that video had a lot of people questioning their current configuration and whether they were oversampled or not, uh, do a, a more research. My, my video only scratches the surface of that. But, um, uh, you know, being undersampled, if your image scale comes to over, say, 2.0, that's sort of a guideline. Your, your stars may start to look somewhat blocky. And this one, uh, at 3.12, I'm definitely undersampled. So the people who left that comment were certainly right. So I thought, well, Maybe the QHY10 would be a better combination with the Rasa 11-inch. Yeah, I know it's more expensive, but it definitely brought the image scale down to something that's closer to, to a, a, a good range when considering being oversampled or undersampled. So now I had my mind set on the Rasa 11-inch. So now I'm thinking um, the Rasa 11-inch is $3,599 is seventeen hundred dollars. I, you know, I want to get some use out of this QHY ten, but I'm going to buy a telescope that's thirty six hundred dollars to do it. Um, you know, I kept thinking, well, that, that's like buying an expensive suit because it goes with your nice tie. You know, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me, and so I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe I've been using this camera as an excuse because I really want a fast scope. So you know what? I, I think that was really the bottom line. So. Forget the QHY10, I probably won't even use it anyway. My objective is, I want a fast scope. That's, that, that was the heart of the, the issue here. Not issue, but that, that's what I really wanted. So now that my objective switched to really that I just wanted a fast scope, I, I stayed on the, the Rasa 11 inch. I, I thought, well, I'd like the bigger scope. Um, but then I kept thinking, well, the focal length of that scope is 620 and the telescope I had used all throughout 2018 and was extremely productive with was 761 with the reducer and I checked the field of views and astronomy tools on that website I showed before on that other video and you know it's 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 just not different enough for me to jump to jump on the Rasa 11 inch I mean, what am I going to do, really, capture the same objects all over again with a faster speed? And maybe I could capture objects that are more faint now, for example, the squid, but um, which would take forever on my slower scope. But I, I 
I just couldn't convince myself of spending that kind of money for a focal length that you know I, I've used quite often already. So now I feel like I'm going in circles. So now I'm back to the Rasa 8 inch because I really haven't done a lot with wide field. So now that idea was appealing to me again. And I'm, I'm not worrying about an OSC. I'm, I'm actually thinking in terms of mono because uh, and mono narrow band. You know, um, I, I'm practically already down to 30 second exposures with my slow refractor and using broadband. That's how severe my light pollution is. So I thought, uh, you know, geez, how short would my exposures be with a, a scope running at f2? So I thought, you know, this would probably be a better tool for me anyway, just to use with narrow band. So that's what I'm thinking. I want a fast scope with narrow band, wide field. I'll try different things with it. So that's where I was headed. And okay, let's move on here. Um, when I again, when I posted that video about whether or not I should buy um, a Rasa, I was inundated with comments saying no. If you get a, a Celestron Edge HD plus Hyperstar, you'll have the option of doing fast wide field, or you can take off the Hyperstar and you can do a long focal length and get in close on objects, or you can do solar system objects. <clears throat> that being versatile, wow, that, I mean, that really made a lot of sense. Um, it almost made the Rasa sound like um, kind of a one-trick pony. I don't know if that's fair, but... I was kind of getting that's where they were heading with that. And I thought, well, that's being versatile is definitely a great argument, but it's kind of an argument that's lost on someone like me because if I were to attach Hyperstar to an edge and it worked well, I'm not one to mess with something that works well. I would probably leave it there forever because I, 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 just the way I am, don't mess with something that works well. So that's, that's, you know, that's a great argument for others, but it, it's not an argument that really worked on me. But what did work on me is that I already own a Celestron Nexstar 8 SC, S SCT. And the idea of bringing that scope back into action and getting some more use out of it, because all I did recently was maybe a couple of moonshots and nothing else. And the fact that Hyperstar, I could add a Hyperstar to it for $999, probably plus a few accessories I would need. Um, I think I want to try that. Um, it, and from what I've heard, when you add Hyperstar to a Nexstar A to C, the difference between my A to C and the Edge actually disappears when they both have Hyperstar. Although I know my, my A to C, the mirror doesn't lock down. But other than that, from you know what I've heard from experts is that it, don't worry about it they're both the same now besides the lockdown so hey that's that's what i think i'm going to do i'm going to add hyperstar to my existing telescope and uh it, it's for me it's the cheapest way to go to see if i really like operating at f2 and i think it's going to be fun to try although I'm going to wait for nebulas to start coming back around. There's not a lot of pickings right now for, for doing narrowband because we're in galaxy season. So um, if anyone has any uh, comments or if you think you can sway me, I'd love to hear it because I'm not going to really uh, buy anything for probably a few more months. <coughs> Excuse me, for a few more months. So um, that's all I've got, folks. Thanks for listening, and I, I hope I didn't bore you. Uh, but I, I still enjoy making videos even though I... I can't do any imaging now, so see you later. Hello, folks. So I thought I'd give you a different view. Now I'm, yeah. And you may notice I am not in the basement anymore. Uh, this is the first time I'm using my iPad like this, and I, I hope I'm looking into the right side where, where the camera is. Um, I'm, hopefully, if I'm looking, why am I talking about this? Hello, folks. This thing always interrupts me. I keep forgetting every hour this stupid clock goes off.
I made a decision on whether or not to buy a Celestron Rasa. And the decision is 